The B-36 Peacemaker was the most important bomber in the American Strategic Air Command's arsenal. These monstrous aircraft were the first US bombers designed to carry nuclear weapons without special modifications, and they had the capacity to deliver enormous payloads across the entire planet, all while evading most traditional anti-aircraft weaponry and radar detection. The B-36 also holds the world record for the longest wingspan of any combat aircraft ever made, and it also featured a unique propulsion system that looks completely backwards. The B-36 only reigned for nine years, but it was one of the most important planes ever built. So join us as we explore the Convair B-36 Peacemaker. Designed to travel the world. World War II had raged for two years when the US realized their current arsenal needed a revamp if they were going to engage with Germany. The German surprise attack called the Blitzkrieg was ruthlessly efficient, but the offensive was running into resistance against the United Kingdom. The Battle of Britain was secured by the Royal Navy, and the Germans were setting their sights on London. The city was bombed relentlessly for 56 days, which created a problem for the US. If the US wanted to enter the war, they needed a strong base in Europe. The UK was the most obvious choice, but the assaults on London meant that option wouldn't work. Alternatively, the US could build a long-range bomber capable of departing from stateside bases all the way to European targets and back without refueling. The B-36 was born from this strategy. On April 11, 1941, the United States Army Air Corps, or the USAAC, released specifications for this new bomber. The plane needed a maximum range of 12,000 miles at an altitude of 25,000 feet, with a service ceiling at 45,000 feet. The plane needed to have a cruising speed of 275 miles per hour, a top speed of 450 miles per hour, and a combat radius of 4,000 miles. But these specifications were unrealistic, so after a little over a week, the Air Corps chopped 2,000 miles off the maximum travel distance, lowered the service ceiling by 5,000 feet, and lowered the max and cruising speeds. Boeing Aircraft Company and the Consolidated Volte Aircraft Corporation went head-to-head -head in the competition to get the contract for building this new ultra-long-range bomber. Consolidated Volte AC would later become known as Convair, and it was Convair that landed the winning design and a $15 million contract to produce two experimental bombers. Design Specs To meet the ultra-long-range criteria, the new Superbomber had to be larger than ever to accommodate the massive fuel quantities needed for the trip. To account for all this mass, the wings and tail height of the Peacemaker were stretched to record-breaking proportions for the time, with the wingspan lengthened to a whopping 230 feet, which is close to two-thirds the length of a football field. The wings were also seven and a half feet thick. Each B-36 crewed 15 personnel, with a pressurized flight deck and crew quarters that were connected to the rear compartment via a pressurized tunnel that went through the bomb bay. The crew would access and traverse the tunnel using a rope and trolley system to avoid the added weight of a mechanized system. The rear compartment contained six bunks and a dinner galley. The propulsion system of the B-36 is one of its most defining characteristics. The Peacemakers were fitted with 28-cylinder Pratt & Whitney R4360 WASP Major radial propeller engines. These WASP majors were the pinnacle of traditional displacement propeller engines until jets and turboprops took over. They were the largest and most powerful piston engines to be mass-produced by the US. However, the engines themselves didn't require this odd backwards configuration. Instead, the B-36 engineers intentionally chose to mount them in a pusher configuration, where the propellers were mounted behind the engines to compress the drive shaft during flight. This setup cut down on propeller turbulence to make the wings more aerodynamic. Early B-36 models using this configuration could output 18,000 horsepower, which jumped to 22,800 horsepower once optimizations were discovered for the engines themselves. The propellers alone came close to another world record, with each three-blade set reaching a diameter of 19 feet to become the second largest diameter of any propeller-driven piston engine. 
While there were advantages to the push-mounted setup, there were also drawbacks. The takeoff time was slower than normal and airflow to the engines was less than optimal, which led to overheating and even engine fires. The lower airflow also caused the propellers to turn slower than other planes, which produced a loud bassy sound that could alert enemy troops of the plane's approach. Weapon Systems the Super Bomber's main bomb bay could hold a staggering 87,200 pounds of payload, which was more than 10 times that of the B-17. The plane was also fitted with six double-barreled remote-controlled retractable gun turrets and two fixed turrets. One at the nose and the other was tail-mounted and accessible via the rear crew quarters. All eight of the turrets used 20mm cannon rounds. The Peacemaker was the only aircraft capable of dropping the experimental T-12 Cloudmaker earthquake bomb. Regular gravity or dumb bombs explode near the surface or at the surface of the ground, but the seismic bomb was designed to penetrate soft bunkers or deep into the ground before exploding. This resulted in enormous craters and huge shockwaves that could take out larger targets such as bridges, tunnels and submarine pens. Troubled Skies the B-36 had a number of setbacks during its lifespan, yet the craft emerged through all of the chaos of a wartime development phase which shows just how important this craft really was, as many once promising planes have been axed midway through development. The B-36 faced roadblocks from its very inception as initial designs titling the plane Model B-35 had to be changed to B-36 because Northrop was already working on the experimental YB-35 flying wing bomber. The final design utilised a four-wheel bogey wheel system, where each set of wheels is attached to a chassis that can contain axles and suspension. These bogies are then jointed to the rest of the landing gear apparatus. However, the initial designs called for a tricycle system that's more common on much smaller planes. The aircraft required enormous wheels, which caused pressure problems on the ground. The B-36 also tested experimental tank-style treads for the landing gear, but this added more weight to the already colossal plane. Due to design oversights, the B-36's M24A1 gun turrets created so much recoil vibration that wiring and other electronics could break or malfunction mid-flight which caused navigation and control equipment failure and led to at least one catastrophic crash. Convair redesigned the tail from a twin tail to a single tail, which cut close to 4,000 pounds of weight from the final model, but it also took almost a third of a year to implement. Further setbacks came when the plane's engines needed to be overhauled to new models and a new antenna system had to be redesigned to meet changes to radar requirements. Altogether, these road bumps added weeks and months to the development of the B-36, while also adding weight to the craft and decreasing some of its original performance goals. The B-36 also ran into red tape issues when the Navy pushed Congress to divert funds from the Superbomber to help fund aircraft carriers instead. Ultimately, this led to the cancellation of the USS United States Supercarrier. While all these problems marred the development of the B-36, the overall increased production time might have saved the US from a serious blow. A year after the B-36 project had begun, the German Ministry of Aviation started working on their own ultra-long-range bomber dubbed America Bomber, but the German project was also fraught with difficulties causing them delays. If the B-36 had progressed at a quicker pace, it's possible that Germany would have felt pressured to finish their own overseas bomber, but plans were eventually scrapped, which might have saved thousands of US lives. While the Germans gave up on their long-range bomber, the US would see their project through to the end. But it would take even more time, as the US introduction to World War II changed the priority from home base attacks to frontline skirmishes. The B-36 would be delayed in favour of increased production of the consolidated B-24 Liberator. The Liberator didn't perform as well as the B-17 Flying Fortress, but its all-purpose usability was a huge selling point for the top brass, who ordered a total of 18,500 B-24s to be built. Post-war redesigns 
By the early 1950s, Soviet missiles had become so advanced that gun turrets on bombers became obsolete. The effectiveness of nukes and guided missiles meant that the US Air Force had to revamp the B-36. In 1954, the Peacemaker was repurposed by stripping much of its conventional weapon capacity. Turrets were stripped and non-essential equipment was removed to create a featherweight variant that was designed to increase both cruising and dash speed along with improvements to cruising altitude. After the B-36 was produced and the Manhattan Project was revealed, the featherweight peacemakers were refitted to carry nuclear payloads. They also became the first planes capable of dropping Mark 17 hydrogen bombs which were the second-generation thermonuclear weapons developed by the US. The B-36 Peacemaker and all of its variants were in service for a little over 10 years, from 1948 to 1959, but due to all of the red tape and developmental issues, the B-36 never made it to the skies during World War II or any combat afterward. Recon and Experiments while none of the B-36s ever entered combat, they did take part in a variety of experiments, including the United States Parasite Fighter Program. This program tested launching a small plane from the air to defend the bomber against interceptors. The tests utilised the McDonnell XF-85 Goblin, which was a unique aircraft in its own right, but it was cancelled when it proved too difficult to dock and its performance results showed it couldn't compete against the full-sized jets it was meant to fight. The B-36 also took part in the projects FICON and Tiptoe, which were advances to the Parasite Craft program. During its 11-year service, the Peacemakers flew recon during the Cold War. The long flight time enabled the US to conduct surveillance on a global scale along with weather reconnaissance. These planes couldn't safely fly over the Soviet Union mainland, but they could patrol the borders. The spy plane variants of the B-36 crewed 22 people in order to operate all 14 cameras and the onboard darkroom for photo development. The planes were also equipped with experimental photo flash bombs, which were like a flash grenade, only on a much larger scale. Multiple varieties of the B-36 recon plane were developed. Some were capable of reaching altitudes of 58,000 feet. The B-36 also took part in the Nuclear Energy for the Propulsion of Aircraft project and the Aircraft Nuclear Propulsion program, which tried to fit planes with nuclear-powered generators for virtually endless flight time. The B-36's immense size made it perfect for carrying the massive 35,000-pound nuclear test engines. Holes had to be drilled in the body to cool the engine during flight, and a four-ton lead disc shield and a one-foot thick leaded glass windshield were installed to protect the pilots from radiation. The B-36 Peacemaker never obtained its goal of flying from the US to bomb enemy targets overseas, but it did succeed in performing recon over those same incredible distances. Despite its setbacks, the Peacemaker's incredible size and unique design allowed it to take part in crucial experiments that helped shape the future of aviation. What surprised you the most about the legendary B-36? Let us know in the comments section and be sure to like and subscribe for more high-flying videos coming your way soon.